Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. Today on Animal Zone, we're going to be talking to veterinarian Dr. Annie O'Donnell, who has all the right cures for your kitty. Then we'll be sitting down with Tamar Geller, New York Times bestselling author and Oprah's personal pet trainer. After that, we'll be visiting the largest pet adoption festival in Southern California, where I'll be emceeing the best in show competition and talking to animal lover and tennis legend, Jimmy Connors. Finally, pet psychic Laura Stinchfield is back to tap into the minds of pets who survived a major disaster. So join us as we enter the Animal Zone. Oh, who's this old guy? Oh, that's Cooper. He's seen a few of these. Most people like to adopt the younger dogs, but one day your time will come, huh, Cooper? Sweetheart, what about these puppies? Honey puppies. Honey puppies. Honey puppies. Honey puppies. Honey puppies. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, that's it, that's the one. The Coldwell Banker Homes for Dogs project has helped find homes for thousands of shelter dogs. How's your tea? Because our agents don't just understand real estate, they understand what home is all about. Thank you for joining us. Let's head back into the Animal Zone. Hey, and here we are with Dr. Annie O'Donnell from the Lacumbra Animal Hospital. And uh, what's up, Doc? I've been wanting to say that all through this series. We're talking cats today, and uh, this is going to be the cat's meow because you know all about cats. Plus, you've met my cat recently, Electra. Here's a here's a situation. So you get a bunch of little kittens that are you know adoptable. Uh, first thing you realize if they're out in the wild is they got fleas. Mm. What do you do about fleas with kittens? Yeah, you know, I wish uh, the natural products work, um, but we just haven't found that to be the case. And so we do recommend prescription flea medications, but don't worry, um, they've gone through a lot of testing, these flea medications uh, with the FDA, and they are safe to give to our little kittens. Okay, because I, I always worry, you know, chemicals and kittens. What about giving a, a cat a bath, a flea bath? Yeah, they don't like baths. Um, so unless if they are super dirty or their hair is all matted, I just let the professionals, the groomers, take care of the grooming. But in general, they do a great job grooming themselves. So I wouldn't, wouldn't uh, uh, want you to get hurt in the process of bathing your kitty. You know, I've always believed or was told that the way you can keep a cat around the house if it's a new kitten, a new cat, is to put their paws on butter and then they'll stay around the house. Is that, is that true? I have not heard that. Uh, for my kitty, when I adopted him, Noah, as long as I left out food, he was so willing to come back and have a good meal. And is it okay to give dairy to uh, cats? I mean, the, the whole idea of milk and all that, is that? No, not a good good idea. Just just cat food and water is, is sufficient for them. All right, because they're really kind of desert creatures originally, right? So they like uh, meat. That's they their are. main diet, right? Yep, yep. Carnivores. They are carnivores, yep, and definitely. So then you, and then of course you look in the cat aisles and there's so many different cans of cat food. There's tuna and chicken and salmon and duck. Is there a specific one that's better for a cat than another? Flavor-wise, no, I don't have a preference, but again, going back to good quality of food is really important. And then in cats, actually, I like wet food over dry food. Um, cats generally are just not good drinkers. They don't drink a lot of water, but by supplying them with a little bit extra water in their diet, then they consume more water and it's better for their health long-term. So if you go to a shelter and you're seeing all these great cats and kittens available for adoption, how do you focus in on the right one for you? 
Again, I think it's more about the connection that you have with a kitty. Is it friendly? Is it vocal? You know, what are you looking for in a cat? Um, and then taking time with that kitty and going into the meet and greet area and seeing, you know, is he very friendly, you know, or is he very um, to himself? And what do you want in a kitty too? Um, you know, do you want somebody who's constantly rubbing up against you or do you want just a little bit of time away from one another too? And then again, the general appearance, does he look healthy? Um, um, what's his, uh, are there any concerns at the shelter for this kitty as well? And when they do kind of rub up against you or they rub their, see, my cat seems to rub his little face all over me, mm -hmm. you know, like, and I, I've been told there's glands, I guess, near its mouth. Yeah, and yeah, it's a, a sign of affection. It is affection. Yeah. So, so cats have affection. They have, they love their uh, caretakers, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And maybe they might learn to love other animals in the house too. <laughs> <laughs> yep, um, it's taken some time, but for my adopted kitty, um, it took them a long time to warm up to my dog, but now in the morning, um, they do cuddle with one another on the sofa and it's ever so endearing. People sometimes get worried about cats clawing on everything. Uh, is there any solution to that where you don't, you're not going to wreck your house and your drapes? Yeah, there are protective coverings that you can order and then definitely getting scratch posts that you can put in place in areas that they seem keen on scratching. So for example, if your cat likes to scratch on the sofa, then maybe putting a scratching post near the sofa so hopefully he's more inclined uh, to go on the scratching post instead. What's the best toy for a cat? Oh, there's so many out there. I think the laser pointers are a lot of fun for them to, to chase. Uh -huh. That little red light that goes all over the room and drives them crazy. Yep. What about catnip? I mean, I've heard that there's not only just catnip, but there's other plants out there that drive kitties kind of cuckoo. Yeah, we do see that in a percentage of cats for sure, the catnip, um, that they kind of get this euphoria um, with catnip. So. Uh, do we know why? why, what's in it? And why don't I get euphoria when I smell catnip? <laughs> You know, I, I don't know the, what it is about the catnip, but yeah, they just, I wish I, I could tell you about that. No. Do they have dog nip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question, no. I'd like to keep my no dog wish. happy, you know? Most definitely. Yeah. I think his, his dog nip is uh, treats. Anytime I bring out anything like, oh, you know, they have the gold treats when they're really, really good, like beef jerky. Oh, my dog goes crazy if you can get a little bit of beef jerky. Mm -hmm. I go crazy if I get a little <laughs> beef jerky. And when you're uh, looking at cats that are out there uh, in, the, in the adoption world, uh, are there certain ages when it's really a senior cat? What, what point do they become a senior cat or an older cat? We typically say 10 years old is when they're considered seniors and that's when we really start advocating to do blood work on these guys on an annual basis. Just in case, you know, this is at the time where diseases can start presenting themselves and we just want to catch something so we catch it and are able to treat it before they start showing signs on the outside that they are actually sick. So really any cat uh, is adoptable and you just have to realize as they get a little bit older you may have a few more uh, care issues but uh, yep. you'll certainly make them a happy cat. You've adopted your kitty, how has that changed your life? Yeah, I think he's just a great little companion. He comes into our bedroom every single morning and rubs up against us and purrs and it's just it's just a nice way of waking up. And then, you know, just his kind of regular routine, he just kind of to himself, but then when you're sitting down, then he's there at your feet, you know, wanting to be petted. And so it's just it's nice to have that companionship. Wow, well that's a lot of great information about kitties and I really appreciate you taking time with us today to share that with our viewers and uh, it was perfect. We're going to take a break and we come back with more Animal Zone. Stay tuned. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today and don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home.
The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay and neuter and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods, and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help at unityshop.org. We're thrilled today because we've got Tamar Geller back here on Animal Zone. She is the behaviorist that goes beyond belief. I mean, Thank you've you. taught not only people and dogs, but I don't know, spirits as well. I think you've got I little magic angels spirits. around you. I do think. I do think we all have angels around us. Well, we have one little black and white angel here. Mikey Lang. Come here, Mikey. Mikey. This Mike. is Mikey, who is the Mikey. adopted pit bull. He was a little Mikey. orphan pit bull that I adopted about seven and a half years ago. And he was very injured. He had been in a terrible oh. accident, physical. Uh, physical problems, and he was also, I think, abused. He was mentally, uh, he didn't trust. Mikey. And then, all of a sudden, he discovered Cal. a new family. Yes. Which we were so lucky. Yes. And Tamar. Yes. Because Tamar helped us Mikey. train Mikey. Michaels. And uh, as you can see, he's doing really good as far as coming. <laughs> yeah, he's, so let's know. say the magic word, treat. Michael. Michael, treat. No, 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 no. Nope. Mikey. Mikey, I want him to come close to me because what I'm doing is actually you've been giving him treats that I really, really rather you not. You mean these uh, biscuits? That's exactly right. It's biscuits. And what happened is if you think about nature, dogs were not designed to eat biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, there were no wheat or rice. These are all But how about, crops, those, how about those dog bakeries that you see around town? Well, the fact that there is a business doesn't mean this is good for dogs. Ah. Mikey Lane. Mikey Lane. What dogs were designed to eat were designed to eat proteins, vegetables, and fats. So what I'm giving him actually is grass-fed beef. Mikey. Because every time I'm giving him that treat, I'm actually enhancing his health. What happened is... Cl calm, calm, and when he's next to me, when he's when, right there, when he's already doing it, that's what I'm going to say. Calm, Mikey, calm. If I had more treats, I would give him more, you know, mm -hmm. more treats like that. Because one of the things you want, we want these dogs to live forever. Yeah, I mean, we most dogs to be live, healthy. what, 12 years, 14 years? And the thing with it is, we see now more and more dogs live into the 20s. Because of nutrition? Because of the change in nutrition. Think about us. Yeah. You know, people now living longer because of medicine and nutrition. Mm -hmm. The same medicine and the same nutrition information is available for dogs. But for some reason, not for some reason, I know why, the dog's nutrition is still stuck in the 50s and in the 60s where they're giving those what they call food, but dog's body does not recognize it as food. Uh -huh. And it takes few years and then the body starts breaking down. You see hot spots, you see chronic ear infections, yes. you see all these things. And the main culprit is the processed food and particularly, partic not only the quality of some of the ingredients, but particularly that they put a lot of carbs in there as fillers, sugars. Carbs translate to sugar. Sugar, if you have cancer, you want the cancer to grow in Petri dish, you give it sugar. Uh -huh. Anytime you want the immune system to be weakened, you give it sugar. Wow. Carbs is sugar. Now also sugar give you momentarily energy, but then it contributes to brain fog with people and with dogs. So we have all the scientific information now that allows us to say, do I make this choice and I give kibble, even if it's the best kibble. If it has carbs that are like wheat or rice or potatoes, or lentils, or any all of these fillers, that's it. At one point, the, bra the body gonna start breaking down, and for me, as a behaviorist, the dog will not be able to think. So if you go into a pet store and you see all these choices, uh, of all these different kinds of pet foods, and some of them are big names, some of them are a little lesser known, Yes. but when they say uh, uh, grain-free, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, we, it's not only grain-free. Grain-free is good. We don't want the dogs to eat grain, but here's the problem. A lot of the grain-free foods 
the fresh that are shipped to your home directly and everything, they have way too much filler in the forms of potato. Potatoes that you should not have more than at the most 10% of potatoes, all these other things, you know, yams, or, you know, it's okay, but up to 10%, the body can handle it. But above that, the body start breaking down. And what happened? The dogs cannot think, I see behavioral issues, and we see all these other health issues. So I'll give you an example. I work with true golden doodle, huge golden doodles belong to celebrities. And they came to live with me on a training vacation at my home in Bel Air. And I'm like, I, I see that they're not, they were the most hyper obnoxious. Me and my team, we were like pulling our heads off. We cannot connect with them. We cannot connect with them. No matter how much we tried, we couldn't connect. And the owner, he goes, I'm not willing to change the food. And I said, okay, we'll give it a shot. After two weeks of all of us pulling our hairs out, we, I just said, I'm not telling him, I'm switching him. I just removed all the fillers. It was protein, vegetables, and fats. And when I'm talking fats, a lot of really good omega-3. Mm -hmm. Very good omega-3, unbelievable, like connect the information to the brain. Paleo, paleo diet, either ketogenic diet or paleo diet. And we put them within a couple of days, the dogs were like right there, right there. And I brought them the dogs and I showed them because I've been sending videos all along. And I said, look, I didn't charge you for that food that I was giving to your dogs, but I need you to see the difference. And they could not argue. The dogs were different. Because if I'm giving a hyper kid sugar pills and asking them to concentrate, how yeah. reasonable is it of me? <laughs> what is carbohydrates? It's sugar. I want a dog to connect with me. So I cannot give carbohydrates right. to that amount and ask the dog to focus. And then to tell the dog is stubborn, the dog is dominant, the dog is stupid, all this nonsense. No, let's empower from health, let's empower from behavior for the dog to be the best version of himself. Wow, good tips. Is it weird if I'm starting to get hungry hearing about all this? <laughs> roof, roof. Well, thank you so much, Tamar. My pleasure. Great to have you here on Animal Zone, and My we'll pleasure. be back after these words. My pleasure. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance of finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them! We're at Care for Paws Wags and Whiskers Festival. This is the biggest animal adoption festival in all of Central California. There are dogs, there are kitties, there are bunnies. There's even a few two-footed people that are ready to be adopted. So let's go and talk to a few of them. We're here with Ariana Katowicz from the Wildlife Care Network, which is an amazing organization that looks after all the wildlife and they take care of them and then release them back into the wild. Uh, great to see you. Hi, thank you for having us here. Now, now tell me, um, I know you guys have gone through a lot with the fires and so forth, but you're back up and running. Yes. People can bring animals they find in the wild and you can uh, nurture them back to health. Yes, we take in about 3,500 animals a year and in fact we took in animals the day after the fire from our temporary shelter and we are back at the center and taking animals at 1460 North Fairview in Goleta. We're open seven days a week, 365 days of the year. Now, generally, what are the kind of residents you have right now at the shelter? Oh, wow. Well, it depends on the season. So all of our baby birds have been fledged and they're they're back into the wild. Now we get our cormorants and other seabirds. And we also have a lot of raccoons, possums, rabbits. So we take in lots of different kinds of animals. I remember a while back, uh, someone found a deer that had been injured on the road up near San Marcos Pass, and they brought him to you 
and you nurtured them back, and then you re-released them back where they were found. Uh, tell me why is, why is that? Well, part of our permit actually is to release animals within at least a mile, and sometimes up to three miles of where they're found. So yeah, we do try to put the animals back in the wild, where they're comfortable, where they're familiar, and where they belong. Now, what's the most unusual animal that you've had in the, in the center? Oh, we've had two, that, well, I'll say the North American badger, that we received from Lompoc. Uh, his mother was hit by a car, and we received the baby, and we nurtured him right up until he needed to be released, and he was an amazing creature, amazing, beautiful animal, and very wild, and long claws, and <laughs> he went back, and our rescuers cried when they finally put him well, back, we but he went back to Lompoc, Air Force, Vandenberg Air Force Base, and hopefully he's thriving in the wild. Yeah, watching the space slits <laughs> taking off. Now you have an adopted dog here. Are you are you also adopting dogs, or do you have you have an adopted animal yourself? Well, of course I'm an animal lover. A wildlife care network doesn't adopt any animals, but this little guy Osito may come home with me today. <laughs> Awfully cute, you know. And um, there's nothing better for these animals than be finding a new home and someone who will be your forever friend. Right. And you know, one of the things about wildlife care network is that we're the animal's voice and. And all of our dogs and cats and bunnies um, have us as our, their owners to really care for them and, and be their champion. And so Wildlife Care Network's the champion for wild animals. We're their voice. And um, it all works together. Yeah. You guys are stars in the animal world. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Arthur. It's my turn to take the stage at Wags and Whiskers. I'm emceeing the Best in Show competition with a panel full of previous Animal Zone guests, including Larissa Wall, Carrie Burns, and Laura Stinchfield. Categories for the competition include Best Costume, Best Lookalike, and Most Talented, who happen to have a mixed double match with tennis legend Jimmy Connors. Let's talk with Jimmy about why he cares so much about animals. First of all, thank you for inviting me today. This has uh, been the most fun, you know, to walk around and, and to see all the people and their enthusiasm for, you know, to adopt a pet here. It just makes my heart, you know, feel so good that uh, the Santa Barbara and the community here have really pitched in behind this. Jimmy, you were a great judge. It was hard, wasn't it, judging all those beautiful animals? It's unfair. It, it's unfair. They're all a five. You know, that's the, the, the highest you can get. And they all have their own talents. But, you know, to go and, and to, to go to a shelter and adopt a pet, it's changed our life. My, my kids, Brett and Aubrey, my wife, Patty, and myself, we've had animals from the very beginning. And the way it's affected us and, you know, you know, we, we love them, but you know, a lot of people forget, you know, the love that we get back from them and the care and what they can do for us physically and mentally that, that just makes our day better. And, and we forget about that. We just think, you know, we take them for granted so much and maybe way too much sometimes, but, uh, you know, never there, always there, never talks back to us and, and just gives us so much pleasure. It's spectacular. Well, it's, it's a great thing that you've adopted these wonderful pets and we really want to help our audience realize that adopting Adopting an yes. animal is one of the greatest things you can do, not for only their life, but for your life. Yeah, but they're waiting. Uh, you know, please go and in, go into your shelters and and walk in and, and see that they're they're waiting there for you and the love that they have to give. And, and uh, you walk out of there, your heart will be broken if you don't take one with you. A, a dog, a cat, you know, anything that. Uh, that fits your lifestyle and, and, and your needs, really what you want. I mean, because they're going to fit into anything and, and any position. That's right. It's one of the few things where the score is love, love. Exactly. And we like it. Yeah. <laughs> All winners. All winners. Pitch in. Be a part of it. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry. If someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Imagine, if you will, a zone. A zone where animals can talk to humans. Submitted for your amazement, the pet psychic, as we enter the animal zone.
We're here today with Laura Stitchfield, the pet psychic, and Lisa Blades, who's a rescuer of dog, bunny, and bird, and you yourself were rescued. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what happened to you. Um, well, we were on a voluntary evacuation on January 9th. Our neighborhood was hit very hard by the mud flow, and we were rescued by first responders. And you were able to rescue your pets. We all made it out. My pets, my teens, my fiance. Wow. Aww. Oh my gosh. But I bet, I bet there was a lot of stress both in your life and in their lives. Yes, we had evacuated a number of times before that. And as I said, we were on a voluntary evacuation this time. So we'd sandbagged the cottage and I'd spoken with the Montecito Fire Department and they had said, if it gets really bad, go on the roof. So I did put a ladder out the night before, before the rains came. And um, we, were, we were very fortunate. Our home was in an island of its own in a sea of destruction. Mm. Yeah. And we were <clears throat> much more fortunate than some of our neighbors. Mm. Oh, for sure. Well, I bet Laura has some yeah, insights so, that maybe the pets would like to share. So with is there anything us. in particular that you wanted to ask them about? Well, you can ask them what yeah. they thought of it, and I'd like to focus on the positive. Yeah, and of course. They right. are, yeah, so what did they learn from it, maybe? Right. And like, Tiki, honey, do you want to go first? Did you hear about what we're talking about? You think the positive is that there were angels around? It was so scary because it was so loud. Everyone was screaming but pulled it together. Good. You just knew, listen to mom and everyone will be safe. That's good. You're really thankful for the rescuers. They just loved animals. Laura, can you tell him that the horse on our property was rescued several days later? Oh, did you hear that? And Odie's fine. She told you? Good. Good. Marshy, what do you think? A lot of people came together to help. You've had people take care of you. Yeah. And they loved you so much. When bunnies go into trauma, we just go quiet. The noise was the scariest for you. Even now when you hear a big noise, you shudder. You still know that you're in love. Good. What about you? What do you think about it? When you, it started raining, you knew it was bad and the sky lit up. Yeah, I heard about that. And then you thought, we better get out of here. Yeah. Your kids were so good. Yeah. They got it together. And they were really good listeners. That's what you, that's your advice? Listen to who's ever in charge of you? Don't go the opposite way when you're told to go one way. You gotta work as a team. That's right. Oh, if you ever get scared, close your eyes for a minute, then open them and be real. <laughs> Good that advice. My birdie. <laughs> be real. <laughs> well, Lisa, thank you for bringing your survivors and yourself here thank with you. us today on Animal Thank Zone. you for having us. Laura, yeah. great to see you as always. And uh, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, there'll be more Animal Zone. Stay tuned. Every morning, you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. Weren't there some amazing animals and guests? You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, check out our website, animalzone.org. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true. Never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine. 
so glad you're my best friend. Through thick and thin, we'll see things through. Canine of mine, so true. Did I find you or did you find me? Either way, it's still serendipity. When I saw you, it was plain to see you weren't just another lassie wanna be. Oh, canine of mine, friend for all time. I'm so glad you're my best friend.